There are 38 chips as of making this in Elite Dangerous, and choosing the right one is important. So, I bet you got questions. I like to be spanked and punished, Daddy! Um, uh, Felicia? Yeah, I think I found one for you. And that's how you get a Corvette. Uh, oh, and now it's time to take a look at the ships that I, the super hypercritical cunt, deem good. Yes, indeed, you heard right. Good ships. Rejoice, people. Not everything is mundane or pedestrian or alliance. Without a doubt, these would be my recommendations either as upgrades or fantastic runabouts. No matter which one you end up with, it will serve you well. And so we kick up this love fest of good and positive vibes with a roar of a terror bread that will bash your face in early on. The Viper 3. This ship is basically a cheaper combat-focused Cobra 3, even though it has lower turning weight. Yes, you heard me right. A fighter turns slower than a space pancake. Still, it has essentially the same stats as Cobra 3, but with lesser cargo bay. It costs about half as much, and if you are speedrunning or doing something specific, early game I'd say this is a good ship to pick up, plus you get some upgrades for the price of one Cobra. Ah, and then we have the good old Type 6. Now, when I started playing the game, I named this one of the worst. And for a combat player... Yeah, you know, that. I found it bad. Yes, it can outturn some combat ships and empty, but load the sucker up with reinforcements, or by waste, and the drift intensifies and the turn rate reduces to a level of a space brick, which this is. Still, what makes Type 6 so good is the jump range. Aside from obvious trading and old mining builds, if you wanted, you could make this into a fleshed out explorer. And I'm not kidding. But speaking of exploration, the Diamondback Explorer, the ship with the second longest jump range in the game, capable of doing 80 plus light year jumps and fuel tank with enough juice to do 11 of them, does make for a compelling traveling or exploring argument, doesn't it? And then everyone starts yelling at me and throwing their dogs and notes and whatnot else at me for ignoring the fact the Diamondback Explorer suffers from a poor maximum fuel scoop, even with a large fuel tank, as an excuse. Still, one rather less mentioned feature of the bow Diamondbacks is the low heat heat output, making it for a pretty decent smuggling or rare goods trader. Though, personally, I use the ship for traveling exclusively, and I tell you, it's cheaper and easier to use than any of the other usual suspects of any type for travels. And of course, if you're talking about traveling and doing whatnot else, there's Aspect Explorer, the granddaddy of explorers indeed. A ship that does it all and does it to at least a very okay standard. In fact, the worst aspect of the ship is the combat, and there, well, as I said, it's okay. The ship is a quintessential jack of all trades, and trust me, you'll be using it for everything and never complain. There's really not much else I can add. Just get this, it's really good. Ah, okay, well, this one's a weird one. The Ferdalance, a ship built for combat and only used for combat. But then why is it not in the one tier list now? And that's a good question, which has a simple answer. It transcends it. The basic fact here is, the Ferdalance is so fucking CHAD SHIP, it becomes good by default. But seriously though, if you ever need to choose one ship that does that one thing so well, you won't ever need another one. There, this is the ship we talk about when we talk about combat. Yet, when we're talking about combat, there are three other ships that were competing for that it's so good it has the Chad McChad Scrotum Bulge. The Assault Ship, which resigned to live amongst one use tier ships, and Clipper as well as Chieftain. Now, those three ships are made more or less equal on the combat portion, but what sets Chieftain and more so Clipper apart is the cargo capacity and not the total rotting roadkill levels of jump range. Since Chieftain has no rank requirement, it's actually a good consideration for a sports upgrade for Asp Explorer. Or better yet, if you still have fingers left after grinding Imperial ranks, you can pick up the amazing, glorious and super fabulous Clipper. A ship version of a blowjob by a bimbo made out of the pure cocaine. The looks, the sounds and even more so the performance all are formidable as an upgrade for an Asp Explorer. Except for the jump range, but it's average and not intrusively bad. The only downfall for this ship is that most people just simply get more credits and get the next multi-roll ship in the line, rather than going and dedicating their time to get the clipper by fondling Torvald's old and crusted old c-
Finally then, the mighty cutter. Now, when I described Corvette, I mentioned that it just does everything, and the same goes with the cutter. Difference though here is that the cutter has acceptable jump range and oh my god, the speed! And oh my god, the locks! And oh my god, the cargo bay! Oh, and about 13,000 point shields with prismatics and engineering. Wait, the fuck? If you ever needed that ship that you can cram everything into and would never slow you down, this is it. This thing. You can fit so much memes into it, you will auto-ejaculate blood! But seriously, for a long time I was running the ship, and the only time when I stopped using it was to film something or needed something specific done in a niche way, where specific ships work better. In a way, I'd even say the cutter makes the game boring, as now you can do everything, and even then, it's all way too easy and simple. That's how good I'd say the ship is. Yo man, for 200 million credits, the most expensive ship better do it all! And so, that's the list. Obviously, I compared the overall usability of ships today rather than how well each one of them accomplishes the respective types of gameplay. Still, every single one of them, well, maybe except for the Jazz Super Testicles McGee Ferdelands, are geared for everything you will need, and you yourself are to be blamed for failure. But hey, I know everyone's list is not the same, so let me know what you'd change, add or remove down below. And while you're there, maybe share the video too. And all that good stuff. Oh, but some of you may have noticed that a few ships are still out of the series while we moved from the worst to best. Well then, take a look at the godlike tier ships. A tier that is self-explanatory. Or if you like to return to mediocrity, then okay tier ships are somewhere there, down in the description. Eh. Eh, but as for me, well, I'll go wank in my ta- uh, I mean, uh, why bother? Yes, I'll go wank my tank off, so you take care.